Hello, my name is Ewan Marshall, Deputy Editor of the Brazilian Report, and Brazil has today announced its fourth quarter GDP figures for 2022, and on this edition of Brazil This Week, we're going to take apart those figures and, you know, see what it means for the economy going forward in 2023 and potential ramifications for the current Lula government. And to do that, I brought with me today our reporter Fabiani Ziola Menezes, uh, who is, you know, my first port of call when I'm looking for quality information on finance and business in Brazil and tech, all that sort of stuff. Fabiani, how are you doing? Thanks for coming on today. I'm great. I'm great, Ian. Thank you. And so just to kind of get us kick started here, I'm just going to begin with, you know, the headline figures of what, what was released this morning. So Brazil announced that in the fourth quarter of 2022, the GDP shrank by 0.2% um, in the final quarter. And that means that for the whole of 2022, that is an overall growth of 2.9%. Now, Fabiani, this is, interestingly, it's the same uh, overall growth, overall GDP growth that um, was seen in the United States this year. And there that was hailed as, you know, solid growth, you know, decent results. People seem to be relatively happy about that. Is that the same response that we're getting in Brazil? You know, how are markets responding? How are analysts responding? How are politicians responding? How is that going? Not exactly the same. Uh, they uh, they are uh, seeing this this result has uh, a little bit lower than what uh, was expected by the the main financial institutions uh, here in Brazil. Uh, the, the the economists in general uh, were expecting something around three percent or a little bit higher, and then uh, what we got was two point nine. So uh, they they expected a little bit more, but I mean they were already expecting the slowing uh, down of the economy in the last quarter of the last year. Uh, this is was something that was forecasted, I think, that by all the, the, the main institutions and also for and also by the, the, the main institutions uh, globally, like the the, the IMF and, and the World Bank. Yeah, so the idea was that this is, you know, not an unexpected result, but maybe not um maybe not the best result possible. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's Exactly, and and uh, right after the the the, the, the result, uh, right, like when the the national statistic statistic agency, the IBJ, disclosed the the result around nine uh, a.m. here in Brazil, uh, the finance minister Fernando Haddad uh, said that the government uh, was expecting something like that, and that uh, it is not working with. A recession scenario uh, mm. for this year, uh, at most a deceleration, but not a, a recession scenario. Yeah, and so like a, a technical recession would mean that would have to be the first quarter of this year would have to be negative growth, right? Yes, exactly. And 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 normally, what economists uh, consider uh, a, a recession, like really a recession, is uh, three results, three consecutive results uh, that shows that the, the economy is, is going backwards. <laughs> okay, and so we've, you know, I, I mentioned the kind of the headline figures, the main figures at the start there, but, you know, as we know, that doesn't always tell the full story. There's always going to be some sectors which do better, some sectors which do worse. So, you know, help us help us pick through this data. Who were the, who were the winners and losers? You know, who performed best, who performed worse, and why? Yeah, so we have, a, uh, I don't know if it's exactly a winner, but it's kind of uh, not a loser too, which is the industrial sector. 
uh, it recovered slightly, growing 1.6% last year, uh, but it's still uh, it growed below the, the 2021 result. And this result was uh, mainly pulled by the, the electricity, uh, gas and water segment, uh, because last year we recovered from a water crisis. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, is this was a, a directly effect uh, on this segment of the industry and the industry has a, a general of the industrial sector uh, grow uh, grew. But uh, when we think about the losers, I think the two of them are, are the, 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 uh, have to be highlighted. So the biggest loser was every business which normally is seen as the most vigorous sector of our economy, but uh, especially from the second half of the year onwards, uh, it saw a, a slowdown in demand, in global demand. So uh, some of our, our main global markets, such as China, uh, who normally buys a lot of the Brazilian commodities, bought less, and this this happens happened for several reasons. For example, uh, because of the deceleration of the, the Chinese economy due to the zero COVID policy that they had during uh, the last year. So we had major cities in China closing because of the, 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 the high number of infections um, by the disease. And then uh, of course that this kind of movement affected their main commercial partners, uh, among them Brazil. As a result, the sector, the agribusiness, shrank 1.7% last year compared to 2021, and was something that uh, hadn't happened in, in a long time. Uh, the other sector that suffered, uh, especially also uh, um, starting in the, the second half of, of the last year, uh, was commerce. And this is interesting because it shows a little bit about the behavior of the family, uh, the families in Brazil, the family consumption. Uh, even seeing household consumption as a whole, uh, sustaining the economy has, uh, as it normally uh, does in the, in the Brazilian economy, uh, the, the sector, the commerce, uh, uh, was affected by the fact that Families uh, prefer to to spend what they could, uh, despite the inflation, the, the high inflation, despite the high levels of of indebtedness. Uh, they choose to uh, spend their money on services and not uh, buying things like buying appliances or for their homes. What they did a lot during the pandemic. So this sector also suffered. Uh, on the other hand, we have the service sector, uh, which I think is, is better for us to explain that uh, when we talk about the services sector, we are talking about uh, hotels and, and uh, travel services, uh, beauty salons, uh, restaurants, uh, gyms, uh, things that uh, the, the Brazilian families and all the families, I think, uh, didn't do or didn't use in the previous year uh, because of the COVID-19 health crisis. So people have actually made a choice last year to, mm. to spend their money uh, seeking wellness or meeting family and friends instead of buying things. And this is very clear when we see the service sector uh, grow in and, and, and answer for the, the, the largest part of the Brazilian GDP. Of course, that this is normally what happens because the service the service sector is already uh, uh, is it, it normally answers for uh, the 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 largest part of the Brazilian GDP. It normally answers for uh, about half or even uh, higher than that, and uh, more than half of the, the Brazilian GDP. Still, the 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 the, the sector as a whole uh, has grew a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so they, you know, they they expanded four point two percent in two thousand twenty two as a whole. So I mean, that's yeah, when it makes up half of the yes. GDP, you know, that's that's right. going to give you a good base to work with. Yeah, definitely. 
And it's something you mentioned uh, shortly um, ago was the the idea that agribusiness suffered a bit in the second half of the year. And I think, you know, when we when we look at Brazil's kind of GDP figures for 2022, we can see a kind of marked difference really between the, the first half of the year and the second half. Because you have a kind of uh, kind of buoyant, confident growth in the first two first two quarters, which just really tails off in uh, the third quarter, and then you know obviously comes in at negative growth in the fourth quarter. So you know what what happened halfway through the year basically to, to to cause this massive difference. So the first thing was the the, the global demand slowing down already. Uh, we saw that some of the analysts and economists uh, were talking about this this uh, deceleration in demand by China and the United States, which uh, are the, the, the greatest economic power right in the world. So everything that happens to them happens to us too. Uh, that, that's the, yeah. the, the first aspect of it. And the other thing is, uh, and this is important because it, has become a, really a topic of discussion between the government and the central bank and even the political parties here in Brazil is the, the higher interest rates uh, here in Brazil. So uh, nominally we have 13.75%. Uh, uh, our, our benchmark interest rate is, uh, but the real interest rate uh, is about uh, 8%. Mm. which is one of the largest, the, the higher interest rates in, in the whole world. And this is like stopping, you know, the country is mm. preventing it from growing in many aspects. Uh, uh, financial uh, operations are expensive. Uh, companies are holding back their investments because their debt has become uh, expensive too. And this is, well, this is, has become a, a great uh, discussion topic here in Brazil. And what the government is trying to do is trying to send some signs, you know, some nods to the central bank uh, to see, to tell the, the central bank, the, the monetary authority that uh, it has the spending, uh, the government spending under control. And then it's okay for the central bank to start cutting the interest rate so the country can uh, get back to the growing track. Mm. And yeah, so when you have like a kind of like a tightening process like that, it, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's one of those things that takes a little while to really, for the population to really start feeling it. And, you know, that seems to be what happened in the second half of the year. And even if interest rates go back up, you know, it's probably going to take a little while for, you know, the, the, the economy to start feeling the change again, you know, is that, is that correct? Yes, it is. And, and it, it's exactly like this, because when the central banks, the central bank uh, uh, analyzed the, 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 the economic scenario, uh, it looks to a scenario from 18 months from now. Mm, so of course. when it decides to do something now, it's looking way, way uh, forward. And what happened too is that this effect of the high interest rates, uh, it was a little bit delayed by some of the actions that former President Jair Bolsonaro uh, take, uh, have taken uh, during the electoral year last year. Mm. So we have we had, for example, a cut in the, the prices of fuel uh, during the, the last year. So this kind of uh, helped the inflation to not to get so higher or so persistent. Uh, on the other side, it kind of raised the, the red flag for the central bank to, to, to see, well, the government is not controlling expanding, so I cannot cut the interest rates. Uh, and then uh, what happened was that we had inflation artificially under control, but high interest rates because the central bank didn't saw the government spending under control. And then mm. when, when we get to the, the, the second half of the year, 
this kind of uh, th these two factors really started affecting all the economic sectors. Yeah, and yeah, we had the election, of course. <laughs> and so, Fabian, we're going to go on to talk about you know kind of forecasts for twenty twenty three, you know, looking forward. But first, just before we do that, just like to remind uh, our viewers that you know videos like this, our podcasts, all that sort of stuff is all backed up and powered by the journalistic engine, which is the Brazilian Report. And, you know, it's a subscription only website. Uh, we rely on your subscription. So, you know, your support, your um, your memberships, you know, that's that's what we need to keep ourselves going. So, you know, we, we produce quality content on Brazil and Latin America, focusing on, you know, finance such as this, politics, um, society, tech, the environment, all that sort of stuff. So please do check out Brazilian.report forward slash subscribe. We've got all our membership plans there. There's definitely going to be one, at least one, that, you know, fits your budget. Um, and also, if you don't, you know, if you want to find another way to uh, support the Brazilian Report, you can also um, support us on Buy Me A Coffee and buying our coffee and kind of fueling our journalists as we kind of cover Brazil and uh, and Latin America as a whole. You can go on to buymeacoffee.com slash Brazilian Report and send us a donation there. Um, and we also on Buy Me Coffee, we now have a, a like a members community there where if you donate a regular amount of money per month, you become part of our Buy Me Coffee community. And that gives you like extra newsletters, uh, kind of behind the scenes information and, you know, a few different fun perks and stuff like that. So please do check that out. Uh, BuyMeACoffee.com forward slash Brazilian report. Right, Fabi, um, I think now we have to look forward to 2023. And we've got, you know, we've got our numbers for 2022. That's all in the books. We're already into March in 2023. So what should we expect for this quarter and the quarters that are coming ahead? Uh, yeah, so when we look at the, the, the forecast by the main financial institutions, uh, we have here in Brazil uh, uh, a report, a weekly report by the central bank which uh, normally serves uh, the, 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 the main leading, uh, leading financial institutions here in Brazil. And, and uh, the median uh, forecast was less than 1% of growth for 2023, 0.8%, uh, uh, more or less. The more optimistic projection was 1.6%, which is in line with, with what uh, Adaj has said, right? Mm -hmm. He said uh, a little bit about, he said that he expect a, a lower growth for 2023. And uh, I think that it, this is in line with uh, what the government is expecting. Uh, but what it's, is curious is that despite the, the drop that we saw uh, in agribusiness last year, uh, what uh, can keep the country from shrinking in 2023 is exactly agribusiness. Mm. Uh, given the possibility of seeing the demand uh, coming from China, for example, rise again compared to the second half of, of the last year. So uh, once again, we are counting on China to, to grow. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like as you said earlier, you know, anything that happens in China, anything that happens in the US, is going to affect immediately affect Brazil. Um, so yeah, once again, de depending on China for this year. And so, you know, obviously, this is a year where you're talking about, you know, the most optimistic, most optimistic uh, expectations are still below like 2% growth. So you know, it's not, you know, it's, it's not going to be um, a year of, you know, great successes, certainly. And it's also the first year of the new government. Um, so you know, how does that, how does that yes, affect it is. Lola and his and his cabinet and his financial team because you know you just get started and you've already got these forecasts for oh yeah economic slowdown we're not going to grow that much it's not going to be that exciting you know that's it's a bit of a low-key way to start your presidency so how does that affect his administration yeah uh, that's no uh surprise uh in the the fact that uh, lula has uh turned the the interest rates like in the, the main uh, topic here in Brazil in the last few weeks. It, it's exactly because of that. He made uh, huge promises about uh, uh, 
making hunger uh, go away again, or helping uh, help, helping companies, especially small and medium companies, to create more jobs, and also uh, helping more uh, people to to become uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, he can't do that if the the interest rates here in Brazil is higher is high as it is right now. Uh, why is that? Because of credit. Credit is something that is crucial for any economic sector to start growing again. So that's why it had become such a fight between the government and the, the central bank. And what uh, finance minister Fernando Haddad is doing right now is trying to to make things a little bit smoother in the sense that he, he, he demonstrates that he's listening to the central bank uh, while uh, trying to find ways to cut spending and also to increase the, the revenues uh, of the government. But uh, I don't think that this is going to happen in the velocity that it needs to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that because, well, we are living uh, some difficult times in terms of, of politics and expectations. People are expecting huge changes from this government compared to the previous one. And I don't think that people will be so patient about mm -hmm. uh, this this economic uh, turn that is necessary to happen here in Brazil, but I mean we we will know better uh, by the end of this month, I think, when Fernando Haddad uh, has promised to present a new plan for reducing uh, spending and also a new fiscal rule here in Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, the rule that existed before that, uh, creating during the government of Michel Temer was highly disrespected uh, uh, many times uh, during Bolsonaro administration and had no practical, practical effect anymore. Uh, so what happened was last year after Lula's uh, uh, victory, he negotiated changes in the budget for this year, asking for more money. Well, much more money uh, for social spending and in crucial areas has health. And uh, this extra money was conditioned to the elaboration of a new fiscal rule, a new fiscal anger that could tell the government if it can spend more or not. Uh, the government had to do this uh, until August. Fernando Haddad uh, brought this deadline um, well, for, for uh, earlier, like uh, I, I think that he said April, now he said uh, April, March. May. So I think March. that with, yeah, in now March, so I think that when uh, he he, I don't know when when the the fiscal rule will be uh, finally presented, I think that the market will understand what it uh, it can be expected for the government from the government when we think about spending, and I think that uh, this is when the central bank will really decide if it it is willing to. Uh, cut the interest rates or not. So I think that the, the, the next few weeks will be decisive and learning if the, 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 the program, the plan of the new government will work uh, when we, 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 we think about the, the market perspective. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So yeah, plenty, plenty for us to look forward to here. I mean, we're, we'll be covering all that on the Brazilian report. Um, as you said, like a decisive few weeks coming up. For the government because you know you got to remember that you know lula won that election with the support of people who potentially wouldn't traditionally support lula or vote for lula it was uh, a lot of people were kind of trying to get rid of jair bolsonaro so now that they've given lula support you know as you mentioned earlier they might not be so patient central bank is a huge factor in this and yeah so this few weeks coming up is going to be absolutely key in brazil and of course you know i'll be i'll be paying attention to all of uh, Fabiani's articles about this, because you know that's that's where you go if you want some if you want some quality content, right? Fabiani, thanks so much. Um, that has been fantastic today. Uh, good explanation of what 
these latest figures mean. And uh, just to say to, to viewers, just to remind you again, that the, um, the Brazilian report is the journalistic engine behind these videos and our podcasts. Please check out the Brazilian, Brazilian report, brazilian.report slash subscribe. And we do quality content on Brazil and Latin America. You're sure to find the kind of membership tier that's going to fit your budget. And as well, if you can't subscribe just now, or you've already subscribed and you want to help us even even more, uh, you can check out our Buy Me a Coffee page, uh, where you can buy our journalist coffee uh, to kind of fuel us in, the, in um, our coverage of Brazil and Latin America. That's at buymeacoffee.com slash Brazilian report. And as well as just sending us donations, you can also join our Buy Me A Coffee community, which gives you um, these kind of extra bonuses. Uh, we, we send out extra newsletters to our Buy Me A Coffee members. We allow Buy Me A Coffee members to, um, to ask us, our team, ask our team a question about Brazil and Latin America every month. So kind of, if there's anything you're interested in from a business or personal or societal point of view, you can ask us. We'll give you an in-depth answer. And uh, make sure to check the, and also, so the Buy Me A Coffee, you can access that via the QR code that's in the bottom right-hand corner um, of the screen. That gets you directly onto that page. So I think that's all for us today. Uh, Fabiani, thanks so much for joining us again. Thank you very much. See you next. Yep, we'll speak, we'll speak to you soon. And until the next video, ciao, ciao. Mm -hmm.